each and every one of you. Praise the Lord and greetings to each and every one of you in the sweet and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who's coming very, very soon. Yeah. It's so it's such a joy to be back after a long vacation uh, to learn the word of God together and uh, really thanking God for the vacations that God gives us. Even that is also uh, such a blessing that we can enjoy uh, the vacation and uh, be safe wherever we were. And uh, let's continue with the Bible study. We, as uh, Brother Kumar said, let's continue with the parables. There are a few more parables so that um, uh, when we learn the parables, we also get to know the New Testament completely. <clears throat> Because the parables contain the theology of Christ and the Christology and the ecclesiology and uh, the salvation story of Jesus Christ, everything is inbuilt or it has been set, set, I mean, said in the parables. So parable is just not a story of Jesus Christ, uh, just to the people. When Jesus Christ said the parable, he included the kingdom's concept in the parable. So when we learn a parable, we learn the entire kingdom concept. So we have to keep that in mind. Parable is not just one story that can be recited or told to a, a, a child or someone. It is the summary. It is the essence of the word of God. It is the essence of the kingdom's principle. It is the essence of the divine truth. So let's continue learning the parable. Today we'll be learning from uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, verses 19 to 23, which is a parable of the rich man and the Lazarus. So this is a very familiar passage or parable that we all know. But even then, let us be in a prayerful attitude that when we listen from the expounding of the word of God, let us pray that God will speak to each and every one of us. Before which, I just want to lift my hands and bless each and every one of you. Father, we thank you. We want to thank you for this time of God. On the basis of the word of God, I want to bless each and every one of them of God. I speak a blessing over their family, their children, the jobs, the business, the health, and all the talents and the missions and the visions you are given to each and every one of us. Let all shall be well with us. We will march forward in the mighty name of Jesus. No weapons, no plans of the wicked will bring us down. Because we are more than conquerors. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Now today, Sister Annette will explain this parable, this beautiful and wonderful parable, before which I just want to request each and every one of you, if it is possible, please turn on your videos so that it will be an encouragement for the person who explains the parable and to each and every one of us. Unless until you find it is not possible, please turn on your videos. Over to Annette. And let's be in a prayer flatitude. God bless you, Annette, and uh, all yours. Go ahead. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord, Church. Greetings to you all in the mighty, majestic, and miraculous name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's such a joy and an honor to share God's word. Uh, nothing greater than that. God's word is power. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will remain. So there is nothing more, much more worthwhile than his word alone, his word is power. And I just bring myself before uh, Christ and I just, just surrender uh, to him that uh, the, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto Jesus. Uh, Pastor, if you could um, share the slide. Annette, uh, you have the slide you can share or do you want me to share? Uh, if if I can share, I will share more. Uh, please go ahead, Annette. Yes. Okay. If it's possible, you do it. Or if it's not possible, I can share. Let me see. Okay. Uh, 
Yes. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes, we can see it. Am I, am I audible? Am I clear? You are audible and clear. And then down there's a presentation button. You can click that. Yeah, but there was this this bar coming, <laughs> Zoom bar. All right. Again, praise the Lord, everyone. Um, so I'm here to share a uh, a very profound, a very valuable, a very powerful uh parable about the rich man and Lazarus. I am sure each one of us have uh, heard this parable, know it by heart, and also have uh you know, uh, can relate to this parable. And uh, uh, this parable, uh, as I am sharing it with you all, uh, it has also, it, it, it's more of preaching myself because it has spoke to me great measures and I myself have learned a great deal out of it. So uh, may God uh, use me mightily to share his word today. So this uh, parable uh, is, uh, first we will read the parable, the passage, from the scripture, and then I will share a few points. Uh, so uh, if you have your Bibles, please turn it uh, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. I'm going to read it out for you. There was a rich man who, dressed, who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried in Hades, where he was in torment. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to them, He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the Amen. Thanks be to God. Yeah. So um, everybody is quite uh, is aware of this parable, but just to give a little brief explanation about this parable. So this parable is about, uh, we just read, a very rich man. Now this uh, parable is uh, very unique in its, uh, uh, you know, in its way, because uh, in this parable particularly, God, Christ has given uh, a name, he has given the character a name, which is Lazarus. Uh, otherwise, in all other rest of the parables, we just find titles like we have for the rich man and we have the, the good shepherd or the good Samaritan. We have titles. But in this particular parable, Jesus has given the character a name, named Lazarus. Okay? So this parable is uh, that makes it unique. 
it is about a very rich man who lived a life of extreme luxury it, he lived an extravagant life we can we can read uh late outside so he wore uh he wore uh the, the cloth of purple in the, in those days uh, the purple cloth was worn by kings and and it was a royal kind of garment and was very very costly so that itself you know tells us about his lifestyle and if you read that uh he he ate the best of food like he had lavish kind of um, meals uh, and bounties on his table every single day so this tells us about his a uh, lifestyle that he had an extra extravagant lifestyle late outside the gates of this rich man's house however was an extremely poor man named lazarus who simply hoped to eat what fell from the rich man's table as we can read that in verse 21 now um eventually they both died lazarus went to heaven and the rich man went to hell appealing to father abraham in heaven the rich man requested that lazarus be sent to cool his tongue with a drop of water to lessen his agony in the fire the rich man also asked abraham to send lazarus back to earth to warn his brothers to repent he had five brothers as we can read to repent so that they would never join join him in hell both requests were denied abraham told the rich man that if his brothers did not believe in scripture neither would they believe a messenger even if he came straight from heaven so uh as i mentioned that uh, in this particular parable uh, christ has given uh, a ty- a name to a character which is lazarus which is taken from the name eliazar uh which means god is my help and we are going to focus a little more on 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 the characteristics of lazarus right now i just want you to focus on these uh and reflect on these important points which we will expound on so uh now before i share the screen um this this slide i want to ask each one of you we've read the entire passage of scripture did you find that uh in any way was the rich man a very sinful person are there any sins you know particularly mentioned in this passage of scripture did he did, did it is, is it written that he he was a drunkard or is it written that he he had lust in him is it written that uh, he was a murderer did he did he commit uh, uh, adultery any kind of sin mentioned in this passage of scripture can we find any sin particularly mentioned in in the passage of scripture when i uh, read it i i could not find any single sin over here then what is it that made uh, the rich man land in hell in a place of so much of agony if he is just eating and drinking and and just having a lavish lifestyle does that mean that he would go to hell what is it that uh christ could not accept him in his kingdom so we if we if we read it directly maybe there is no sin mentioned but if if we read between the lines and that is what scripture is you have to reflect on its words it clearly tells us that lazarus was brought to his uh, house laid outside his gate day in and day out and if you read um, the condition of lazarus he was a beggar he was poor he was hungry he had nothing to eat he was just you know waiting for the crumbs to fall from uh, from the rich man's table so just he could he could grab them he could eat them he had sores on his body and the dogs licked his sores right so this was the condition of the man which was who was brought to his gate who was brought to his house but do we read here in this passage of scripture that at any point in time in his life did he feed this poor man did he feed lazarus or did he clothe him seeing that he had uh, no clothes on his body did he take him to the doctor did he show any kind of concern so that in god's sight is a big sin yeah and that is why he landed up in hell he was he was completely in difference to the plight of lazarus he completely ignored him for him he was not even there he was so rich imagine uh, being so rich you know sometimes um when we are traveling uh, mostly in our hometown here it is not very common 
but uh, nowadays here also it's become common but uh, when we are in our hometowns and we are just traveling we see a lot of beggars on the streets and especially uh, so like if it's a it's it's a normal beggar having like full clothes and 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 you know uh, like fit or uh, healthy then probably we do not um, have so much of compassion or empathy but if that beggar is having any kind of disability don't our hearts melt for that beggar or for that poor person immediately our hands will go into our pockets or into our purses or our wallets to give something at that point in time whatever we have we will definitely offer it because our hearts will move leave alone being religious leave alone being a pastor leave alone being a leader of the church or anything just being a lay person just just being a normal person out of humanity we will be moved our hearts will be stirred to help that person right and imagine and that is just if if we happen to see right but imagine this this beggar is brought to this uh, rich man's house uh, is laid outside the gates of his house every single day and he's been probably seeing him for years now but why is it that his heart is not moved even a single time to feed him and that in itself is abhorred by god and that is which makes him land in hell so these are the important points uh, to reflect on that as i mentioned the rich man completely ignored lazarus and then a uh, poor rich man and lazarus died now this is another important point uh, this parable which jesus speaks about uh, you know is is so important and so profound because it it reflects it talks about so many important uh, points so many important doctrines i think which pastor alex might uh, explain later uh, about life and death in the first place you know if even if you are rich you are poor you are a child you are you are an, you 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 are uh, an, an old aged person anyone you are a, a a a woman or a man or anybody you will be a great scientist a great conqueror anyone each of us we have a journey here on earth and our journey has to have an end so this parable is very very clear jesus himself is saying that yes we all are going to have an end this life is not going this earthly life here will not remain forever we have to die and what happens so this is a big big eye opener for for all of us right and and especially to the people who feel that you know what will happen if those who do not actually uh, think about what will happen when they die this parable is a big eye opener for them so uh, everyone has to die be it great or small everyone has to die then uh, it talks about heaven and hell which we will discuss in the next uh, slide and the rich man calling out to abraham as father now this is another important point moving on as i mentioned about heaven and hell uh, first of all uh, jesus teaches here that heaven and hell are both real literal places now this is a very very important point because many preachers uh, nowadays shy away from preaching about heaven and hell yes we we chant about heaven a lot uh, but hell is is a very very sensitive topic mostly uh, preachers and and uh, we also when we evangelize we would want to shy away or we would would want to you know keep this topic for a little later but jesus has many many times in in the gospels in the four gospels we see that many many times he has placed great emphasis on heaven and hell and and after we die what will happen he talks about uh, uh gnashing of teeth he talks about worms he talks about the hell he talks about the fire of hell where we are tortured we are tormented day in and day out jesus never shied away from this topic and so uh, this is a very very important topic which which nowadays i feel uh, is quite you know uh, is 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 neglected this point because people feel that you know if we, we talk about um, hell people might just you know not want to come again to church or you know they will they will be um, they will they will have a burden uh, or they will they will be offended uh, so that is why 
uh, it's a very, it's very uncomfortable for anyone even even if if you if you talk about me it's very uncomfortable to you know share about heaven and hell heaven yes we want to but hell we shy away from this topic and nowadays uh, a new concept which is called universalism is being preached a lot wherein the belief is that everyone goes to heaven and uh, if you are saved once you're saved forever these are some uh, um, these these are some concepts that are being taught nowadays that once you receive uh, the water baptism once you receive uh, uh, the holy spirit baptism you have the seal you are booked for heaven you have the boarding pass to heaven but it is not so we have to uh, you know we 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 have to earn that life of eternity and that is exactly what this parable talks about uh so jesus spoke a great deal about heaven and hell and like the rich man today multitudes today uh, are complacent in their conviction that all is well with their soul you know even i have spoken to people who feel that it is well or you know when whenever we wish to talk to them about jesus and about them you know uh, trying to get their life straight firstly they will you know uh, say that oh what is wrong with my life you know i don't murder i don't steal i'm not a rapist so what is wrong with my life my life is all good and uh, probably i'm going to heaven and there are and there's another group of people who say that fine everybody is going to hell you know they 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 are of that attitude that fine you know we all are sinners nobody can be so righteous and uh, forget about all this everybody is going to hell and you know one person you know went ahead and even told me oh you are preaching me but you know you are also going to hell so you know uh, people nowadays are um, they are so they are so complacent that uh, they 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 are not thinking about what is going to happen to them once they die the choices that they make today uh, has a great effect on what kind of eternity they will receive but people are very very complacent these days and many of the believers they feel that oh we're doing all well it's it's all well with us uh, and you know we will be going to heaven they are they have that assurance but uh, the gospel of matthew chapter 7 and verse 23 tells us and then i will declare to them publicly i never knew you depart from me you who act wickedly so you know uh, this is something that has always been so hard hitting for me that uh, what is it that we we need to do to be assured of our reaching heaven and this and this has to have uh, this for this uh, we need to make choices every single day of our lives every day is uh, our 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 uh, our journey here on earth we have to make choices that will eventually help us either to land in heaven or either to hell so that is what jesus taught here heaven and hell are real literal places where lazarus reaches heaven and the rich man reaches hell then uh, also this parable um talks about um riches jesus spoke uh, a lot about riches and um, riches can be deceitful the gospel of mark chapter 4 and verse 19 tells us that the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it proves unfruitful it jesus is telling us that riches are deceitful you know um satan always likes to deceive us he will always use tricks which please the eyes even when he first appeared to eve she was deceived by the fruit she saw she saw that it was beautiful she saw that it it was pleasant to look at and she got trapped she got deceived and so are riches when we when we look at riches when we look at wealth when we look at prosperity it's it's all good right who would not want to be rich it comes in its show it comes with with a lot of people are pulled people are attracted to riches and that is how it is it is deceitful riches are deceitful they distract us they detract us they 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 you know they move our attention away from the giver of those blessings to to the material itself and we tend to uh, make the riches our god we idolize them also 
uh, the gospel of uh, Matthew chapter 19 verses 23 and 24 tells us then then Jesus said to his disciples truly I tell you it is hard for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven again I tell you it is easier for a camel to go to the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Scripture is clear that it is very difficult. You know, imagine a, a camel going to the eye of a needle. That, that means it's impossible. In other words, it's just impossible. But why? Once they're rich people, once they're wealthy people in the Bible, don't we see them in the Old Testament? We, we know about Job, uh, uh, Pastor had, had taught us, you know, had given us a full bank account, his details of his wealth. He was so very rich, right? Abraham had so much, so many cattle. He had, he had, he had herds and herds, uh, and he was so rich. Uh, what is it? The, even in the New Testament, we see Cornelius being wealthy, right? So people are rich. People, if the the Bible itself says that that there there were people, David, King David was rich, Solomon. There was nobody like him in in the entire world, you know, as as wealthy as he was. So why is it that here in this particular passage of scripture we see that it is nearly impossible for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God? So, um, you know, I was just uh, thinking about this, and um, you know, this word rich. Uh, just, just uh, I, I felt like you know digging deeper into this word rich. So uh, leave alone the wealth part of it. Just if you focus on the word rich, whenever we have uh, a cup of coffee with a lot of milk, with a lot of sugar, with a lot of cream on top of it, what do we say? Oh, this coffee was so rich. Yeah. Uh, if we have soup, which is so full of um, cream and other things, we will say the soup was so rich. Right. So what is it to be rich? To be rich means to be so full of something. It could be wealth. It could even be your knowledge or the wisdom that you have. Some people are so, so full of, 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 of intelligence. Right. And when you are so rich with something, like, for example, if you, if you have that, that big bowl of soup, which is rich in its content, then what will happen? You're so satiated, right? Your tummy is full and for the next few hours, you don't even want to think about food. Doesn't that happen with everybody, right? When you're so full, if you eat rich items, then what happens? Then you're, you're satiated for a longer period of time. So then you do not desire any other kind of food. So is it with being rich. Being rich means, Jesus is saying that you will be so full of all these things. You will completely, totally depend on your riches, on the prosperity, on the fame that you have, that you will you will deviate from the word of God. You will tend to be distracted so much that you will not even come to God for anything because you will say, oh, all my needs are met. Yeah. So that is about uh, being rich. So, you know, um, God loves the poor and he came for the poor. He His word says that he has come uh, for the poor. Right. Uh, God is, Jesus is very, very mindful of us always and always looking up to him for help. And he loves it when people long for him. When we are, when we have all the riches of the world, we will definitely be so distracted that we will not uh, eventually bow down to him. We will bow down to those riches. It happens, right? When we get a job uh, and uh, our job is paying us well, what will happen when we have a we have a title we have a position we will try and please our employer we will try and do anything we will work long hours we will do anything so that you know we will remain stagnant on that position so what happens is that you deviate from the from the word of god you don't give time to god and you and a day comes when god is totally out of the picture right so that is what, what are riches and that is why riches are deceitful. So we need to be very mindful that riches, if they are given by God, if you are being blessed by God, then those riches have to be used very wisely. The early church, uh, what they did was they would sell all their position, uh, possessions. We can read it in the, in the book of Acts. That they would sell all their possessions, their lands, their properties, and would bring... Uh, 
all 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 of their wealth and place it uh, at the feet of the apostles and then the apostles would distribute that entire wealth amongst everybody so that everybody was equal among them all of them and all of their needs were met that is how christ wants us to be he wants us to follow that format that pattern that whoever has you know the, uh, once a rich man um, comes to jesus and and says that you know uh, how do i enter into the kingdom of heaven uh, so jesus tells him you know uh, uh, follow all the commandments so he says that i've been following all the commandments since i was a child so christ just tells him one thing that okay uh, go and sell whatever you have and come and follow me that makes him so sad that makes him so gloomy you know he had that desire to go into to to enter into the kingdom of god but he just left from there because he could not you know he could not uh, give away his riches you know so are riches and so was this rich man he was so full of himself he was so full of his wealth that he had the clothes that he wore the 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 reputation that he had the fame that he enjoyed that everything around him was completely him it was just me it was just me 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 he did not even look around to see if there was anybody apart from him so that is why uh, we have to be very mindful uh, when we when we pray for riches and as you know there's there's a verse that we all like to quote that which says that seek ye first the kingdom of god and all all of these things shall be added unto you even sometimes what happens is that we pray that prayer or we quote that prayer sometimes even that in a very very selfish way probably that okay god i i want to do all this but you know your promise at the end is, is quite uh, attractive you know i also after doing all this i am expecting these riches but sometimes it does not happen so you know we have to be very mindful of the fact that whatever god is blessing us with he wants us to be considerate towards others he wants us not to neglect anybody who is less fortunate around us all of the time we have to keep our eyes ears and our hearts open to the people who are less fortunate who are around us who are our neighbors you know like the good samaritan uh, there were other there, there was there was there was a levite who just passed by him and did not even bother to to you know to to help him why is it because he's not my neighbor so who is your neighbor anybody who is in need is your neighbor and we have to god has told us love your neighbor as yourself we have to the, the way we treat ourselves imagine how the king treated himself could he have treated the poor lazarus i'm sure both of them would have been in the bosom of abraham right so um that is my point over here that god loves the poor and is offended he he feels very bad you know when when uh, his children neglect them in fact those who show mercy to the poor are in fact in effect doing a big ministry uh, the gospel of matthew chapter 25 verses 35 to 40 for i was hungry and you gave me something to eat i was thirsty so we are you know we 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 are ministering to jesus himself when we have the poor i was thirsty and you gave me something to drink i was a stranger and you invited me in i needed clothes and you clothed me i was sick and you looked after me i was in prison and you came to visit me then the righteous will answer him lord when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you the king will reply truly i tell you whatever you did to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine you did for me that is the ministry of jesus that is what jesus wants us to do he came in the world for for the poor for the needy for the orphans for the widows those who had no one for them he came he, he came for people like them he helped them he had compassion on them and so he expects the same from us as well when he blesses us he expects that blessing to be used for others as well we cannot keep that blessing be it of wealth be it of a house be it of a car uh fear of anything it has to be offered to the people around us and i'm when as i'm speaking this uh i am so so grateful to god for for uh, whc because uh, it's my testimony i i have been more on the receiving end and 
you know people out here the family has been so helpful and i can see i can see so many i can you know actually start to give names but then it wouldn't be right but you know people here have have offered their homes even in their absence for praise and worship to carry on and and people have offered their cars and and you know they 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 just offer their blessings for others around so that nobody uh, is is left out nobody is you know uh, is is left out from coming to church or 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 receiving a blessing of god so we thank god for the hearts that we all have and and just and jesus just wants us to be consistent you know this parable might be an encouragement for all of us that if we are on that track if if we are using the blessing that we have for others then we have to be consistent in that because not doing good when we know how to do good and we don't do good it's a big sin in itself yeah and and a sin which will which will land us in hell so we have to be so mindful um all right so um also um yeah i also want to share a bit on uh, the rich man uh, first of all i shared with you all let me see this i shared with you all uh, about his sin of ignore of ignoring uh, the less fortunate right of ignoring lazarus also i want to share about uh, his attitude yeah so we see that um, even when he goes to hell that attitude of his doesn't leave him. you know he is burning there he is he is being burned and scorched in the fire of hell and he sees lazarus from a distance because there's a great chasm between him and between lazarus who is in the bosom of abraham and even at that time he is calling out to to abraham saying father abraham please send lazarus you know he's just considering him even a uh, probably a servant that please tell him to come and you know do this for me please come tell him to dip his finger in in water and come and cool my tongue so that attitude of his probably that reflects what kind of a person he would have been when he was on earth you know proud that is what riches brings to us right we are so full of ourselves that that pride uh, selfishness all these qualities just we we don't even realize and how they they become a part of our character and also the fact uh, that the rich man called to uh, abraham he called him as father now um you know this this particular phrase father abraham uh, is my understanding that uh probably this man knew the torah knew knew the scriptures he knew that abraham the jews call abraham as their father they they are so proud of abraham being their father and he's he's calling him by that title that means he knows who abraham is he probably knows the scripture and he knows what he needs to do with his wealth and riches he knows that he is he's being unjust he knew it all back then while he was on earth but what did he do out of the knowledge that he had out what did he do uh, did he follow the scriptures did he help lazarus no so this is something very very important you know we all know christ we all have a personal relationship with him but are we following him are we really really working on the scriptures are we really doing things which which uh which which you know uh bring us closer to him and which fulfill uh his word yeah so this is what i just wanted to share uh now talking about lazarus let's let's also look at this parable from uh, the perspective of lazarus knowing scripture helps us to uh, understand that god's children can suffer while on this earth we see lazarus he suffered right uh now if you look at this picture over here you will see dogs licking his sores you know uh and we can very clearly compare him to another character in the bible in the old testament which is job right he also went through the same kind of pain and torment uh but the difference is that he was restored everything back on earth but for lazarus he is he dies the same way but then in heaven he gets the best place the best seat ever right so lazarus suffered he was ignored you know he lacked comfort he was hungry and he also had physical ill can you just relate yourself to any one of these points probably not now 
but earlier in your life or even if you're going through something right now if you feel that you're suffering here on this earth maybe you're feeling that you're being ignored you know we can be ignored many a times and and we may feel that pain inside that why are we being ignored we are there we are there in that circle but then we feel so left out probably we are lacking comfort we do not have the comfort of life as we expected to have while while when we when we plan to come to uae probably we thought a lot of things that we're going to have this down the line in 5 years probably i will have this that this that but now i am even lacking comfort probably i cannot sleep at night he was hungry are there times when you have gone without food physical ailment are you struggling with some kind of disease in your body the word of god is here to encourage us today even lazarus went through all this but as his name suggests the god who helps he was helped when he died he received the best place he was helped by god and he was put in a position which we all would desire abraham's bosom now bosom is um is a word which means uh, a place of secrecy a place of intimacy you know we often uh, read in the bible in the gospels that john would be inclined uh, would be reclined we would would be reclining uh, near jesus right so to be to be in the, in the place of bosom means to be, uh, be be near someone's chest near someone's heart that is the place god is offering to every lazarus sitting here you know he 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 is comforting us today that no matter on this earth you're facing this there will come a time when you will be at my bosom you will be so close to me you will have that that intimacy that place of uh, complete rest amen this is what i wanted to encourage each one of you today uh so my final thoughts uh, uh on this parable that um, our earthly lives uh, the book of james chapter 4 and verse 14 says our earthly lives are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes this is what uh, i would like to summarize this entire parable with that um, our earthly sojourn is extremely brief right as we read over here so perhaps the greatest lesson we learn from this story is that when death comes knocking on our door the thing which matters most is my second point our relationship with christ how is it how is our relationship with christ today are we you know having uh, calling him lord lord and doing what he tells you to do are two completely different things we can call him lord jesus i love you i i can do anything for you we can do that all day long probably we can attend hundreds of meetings but then still be dry within if we are not doing what he has called us to do amen then um it links agony or comfort after death with how we treat the less fortunate around us much like matthew links eternal life and punishment with how we treat the hungry and thirsty strangers the naked the sick and those in prison which we already read right then uh, summarizing the love for money and possessions as i i spoke about this that the rich man he completely loved his lifestyle he was so full of himself right so today we need to check ourselves have we made anything an idol it could be anything that we we prioritize uh we when we when we let jesus take the back seat and we put other things first that is when we make an idol out, out of something when we do not put jesus first god wants always to be first in our life in everything that we do he even says you know if you love your parents you love your mother your father your brothers and sisters more than me then you're not worthy of me so today you know are we idolizing our relationships are we idolizing money possessions wealth our property our bank balance is there anything in our life that we are prioritizing more than jesus is are we using the gifts the blessing that god has given us given to us for others are we taking care of the widows are we taking care of the orphans you know are we doing things for them as the early church did we really myself i have to do that and i encourage you all to just just check your life how is it yeah uh and uh, the last point is i i think you cannot see it it says to be rich towards god 
So today, even if you feel like being rich, then just be rich towards God. So be so be be full or be full of God, right? So that when you receive those waters, He will you know create channels of water out of you. When you receive Him, definitely He will make you a channel of blessing for others. That is how God works. He's a God of He's not a God of addition. Definitely, He's not a God of subtraction. He is a God of multiplication. That is his character. Something given in the hands of God is always multiplied. He always wants to satisfy the need of others. That is how he always treated others. He couldn't see anybody sick. He couldn't see anybody hungry. His heart would always be moved with compassion when he would see people uh, thirsty or hungry or or sick or lame. That is how he wants our hearts to be today. He wants that burden. He wants to see that burden in our hearts today. And uh, this was this my last slide. Uh, I I just want to end. Uh, you know, uh, I have already spoken about Abraham's bosom. Uh, but I just want to. Uh, uh, you know, I was thinking about this. That why is it that? Uh, you know, probably as Alex is going to talk about the doctrinal part of it. But uh, I was just thinking that you know my understanding. Uh, why is it that it's only Abraham's bosom that the, the that Lazarus falls into? Why not any other prophet uh, or any any other any any other character in the Bible? So, uh, to me, what what clicked was that Abraham is called the father of the faithful. And in Hebrews uh, chapter six and verse eleven, we read, "The one who remains faithful to the end will be saved." So. Abraham entertained Lazarus into his bosom because he remained faithful to the end. We do not see him cursing God. We do not see him uh, stealing the food. We do not see him. It's not mentioned in the Bible. And if he is landing up into heaven, that means he did something good. He did. He did not choose the wrong path. You know, sometimes you may have excuses when we do not. We lack some things in our life when we are lonely. We may have. A lot of excuses to choose the wrong, uh, wrong track. Oh, because you know, I was lonely, so I did this. I was feeling sad, depressed, so I had to go to the bar. There are so many, so many excuses that you might give. But Lazarus, look at his state. The dogs came and and licked his sores, but then too, he did not want to choose the wrong path. There was, there were, there were. He had a lot of excuses he could give to God, but he chose to stay faithful till the end, and to be very, very sure of the fact that suffering is going to come. There will be problems. There will be storms in life, but are we ready to hold on to our faith till the end? Are we ready to fight the good fight? Are we ready to finish that last lap of the race? Jesus is coming soon, and. Yes, as this parable suggests, we all have an end. This life on earth is brief. What are the choices that we are making today? Are we so full of ourselves today? Do we want to be rich materialistically, or do we want to store up treasures in heaven, where no moth will come and destroy, where there will be no rust, it will not be stale. Your your wealth is going to be completely intact, and you will you will enjoy and you will enjoy that wealth and um in heaven above. So that is what I wanted to share today. So God bless you all and uh, may God really help us all to be like Lazarus, to to really, um, uh, if, if we are suffering for that uh, matter. And uh, today, let us just ponder over our lives. If there is something that we need to work on, there, there are a lot of things that I need to work on. He has given me blessings, but I think I'm only using them for myself. It's time that I start using them for others. So. Um, if if God is talking to you today and, and he's he's just knocking at, at the door of your heart saying that these are the areas of your life, these blessings are there and you're just enjoying them yourself. You are not giving anything to the people who are less fortunate. Then it's time that we start doing that. Amen. So thank you so much for sharing with me and God bless you. God bless you, Annette. Thank you so much for sharing God's word this evening. Um, just for further information and just to add some more things to the thought from this parable. If time permits, please listen to certain sermons which has been preached by 
anointed men of God. One of the sermons on this topic that was so anointedly preached was from uh, uh, Reynard Bonke, uh, the evangelist or the apostle of Africa, which is, uh, he is uh, an anointed man. He was an anointed man of God and uh, listen to his sermons on this topic where we get a lot of information and, and, and uh, anointed thoughts, what God has shared to him. Thank you so much, Anand, for bringing a lot of information and thoughts from this beautiful scripture parable. God bless you. God use you mightily for his kingdom's glory. Our prayer is that God will use you mightily. Amen. One or two thoughts and we will wind up with this sermon, uh, with this uh, parable today. This is a very rich parable that has been taught by Jesus Christ. We need to understand this is a Jewish parable where Jesus Christ emphasizes on uh, Lazarus, a rich man, Abraham, hell and heaven. And uh, some of the personalities that we find are very peculiar. These are found only in Jewish parables. And uh, one of the interesting, interesting thing is usually today, the rich people's name will be published. But here, rich man's name is been hidden and the poor of the poorest man's name is being published over here, which I thought very interesting. When Jesus says uh, the poor man, Lazarus, Jesus had recognized him with a name whereas the rich man was not recognized with a uh, earthly name. This is one of the ways in which heaven understands us, each and every one of us. The world may understand people through their wealth, but God will recognize with our name. People may not understand or recognize us with our wealth, but God understands us with our name. There is a beautiful words in the Old Testament where it is written. The people of God, they are being remembered. Their names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Whereas the earthly people's name are written on this earth and it vanishes away. This evening, I just want to emphasize, if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, Give your life to Jesus Christ because God loves to write your name and my name in the Lamb's book of life. God wants to recognize you with the name uh, that has been given to us. In this beautiful parable, Jesus emphasizes by saying that there is a life after death. Please don't ignore the truth of this life after death. This parable is a great warning to each and every one of us. Don't ignore. Don't just while away. Just don't take it for granted. There is a life after death. And there is a place known as heaven and hell. There is a real place known as heaven and, uh, I mean, heaven and hell. And uh, the Bible beautifully describes the nature of hell. Let me just very quickly tell you because these are recorded sessions so you need not take on down notes. See, the nature of hell is this. Well, according to the word of God, hell is a place of darkness. Gospel of Matthew 22, 13. It is also a place of torment. Gospel of Luke 16, 23. A place of separation. Same. Gospel of Luke 16, 26. Place prepared for devil and his angels. I'm talking about the nature of hell, which has been described in, recorded in the word of God. Uh, hell is a place which is to be avoided. Proverbs, we find, uh, it has been beautifully said in Proverbs, avoid hell, a place that is not kept for you. You need to avoid hell. So these are some of the natures of hell. Bible also talks about the characteristics of or, or how heaven would be. A place of many mansions, a place of many mansions. 
So don't worry whether you'll get a place to sleep or to rest or anything. It is a place of many mansions where we don't sleep at all. That's true. A place with no death, worry, cry, or hunger. A place for the saints of God. A place where we find the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. A place of exceeding joy and peace. These are some of the beautiful narrations of hell and heaven. We, I'm sorry, heaven we find in the scripture and also about hell, which I mentioned earlier. And in this parable, I just want to emphasize one or two things and we will spend little time in prayer. See, in this parable, we need to understand material prosperity is not always an indication or evidence of spiritual abundance. Let me repeat that once again. Material prosperity is not always an indication or evidence of spiritual abundance. See, what happened to this man? He was materially very rich. He was, he, there was abundance of material richness to this rich man in the, in the parable. But he ended up somewhere else. Today, most of the preachings and the teachings that we find today is this. You will be filled with material abundance. You will be rich. And if you're not rich, you are not a child of God. I've heard it. I've heard it. I'm not here to judge any preachings or teachings, but the things which I've heard, I'm sharing to you. But in this parable, we find material prosperity is not an indication or evidence of spiritual abundance. On the other hand, poverty does not always mean that a person is in curse or God is angry with him. So we need to analyze what is our situation today? So I'm not going into it deeply, but in this parable, we need to understand and discern that if I am not materially blessed, I am under a curse. If I'm materially blessed, I am being blessed by God. These two concepts have to be very carefully understood according to the scripture by a child of God. So the third thing I just want to, and the fourth thing I want to understand, say is this, godly contentment, peace and fullness of God's present within a person can help a person to overcome any situation that he is going through. Let me repeat that once again. If you are going through a suffering, if you are going through some of the tough times of your life, one of the but driving elements that can help us to overcome these situations are godly contentment, peace and fullness of God's presence with us will help us to overcome the other side. Hallelujah. So therefore, it is not the worry that must drive us. It is godly contentment and the fullness of God's presence within us which will help us to overcome the other side because God says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hallelujah. People of God, let godly contentment carry us through. In the coming days, let the presence of God carry us through. We heard in a couple of sermons in our churches that the presence of God is more than enough to take us through, through the other side. That was Sami said, even though I walk through the valley of shadow, a rich man, it's a psalm of a rich man, it's a rich king. What is his psalm? Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because the contentment of godliness, the presence of God within his heart is the one and the only element that will drive us through, will take us through the other side. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we need to understand. It is grace, grace, and grace alone. It is, it, it is, it is the, the promise of God that will carry us through. And one of the important things that I have understood here is this. Spirituality 
is not an outward projection. It is not an outward show, but a deep relationship with the creator. When we see this parable, we find Lazarus died and the angel of the Lord took him. Angel of the Lord carried him to Abraham's bosom. So spirituality is not an outward show. Today, what is happening in this world is this. If I pray three times, I want to publish it somewhere. If I am a great preacher, I want to publish it somewhere. If I am a great teacher, I want to publish it. If I fast for 20, 30 days, I want to publish it. I want to publish my spirituality to others. I want to show others that I'm spiritual. In this parable, when the, last, when the poor man Lazarus died, he was being carried by the angel. Let me tell you, this parable is narrated by Jesus Christ himself. And he says, spirituality, when I understood from this parable, spirituality is not an outward projection or an outward show. It is a deep relationship with you and your creator. Hallelujah. That is what we need to practice in these days to come. And uh, we also understand there is no second chance given either to the rich man or the poor man once he dies. There is no second chance given to anyone. And finally, I just want to conclude by saying there is an, one more character that we find in this rich man. This character I love more. And it brought in the, the, the two different characters, but there is one more that we should not forget. The rich man, when he was in the hell, he said, Father Abraham, please send Lazarus to my brothers. I have five brothers. I don't want them to come here. See what a good character. <laughs> he had a very good character. If I was there, I would say, don't send anybody. All those guys must come where I am. <laughs> if I'm here in the hell, I need everybody to come with me. But I see a good character in this rich man. He says, Lord, please send Lazarus. I don't want anyone, none of these guys should come here. I know for sure all my brothers will end up here. What I understand from here, from this, from the story is this. Having good attitude or value will not work after death. All these attitudes must be practiced here and now. Your good attitude must be practiced here and now. As we heard from Sister Annette, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Who is your neighbor? Lazarus was the neighbor of the rich man, but he was not bothered. It would have been just taken but just one minute. He could have nursed him. He could have given him food and changed his situation. But one of the fearful factor that I want to tell this evening is this. A man died in poverty under our vicinity. Please keep this in mind. A man died in poverty under the rich man's vicinity, which was taken seriously by God. When we are able to help somebody, we ignore and people die under our vicinity. When we are supposed to share the gospel and people perish, without hearing the gospel under our vicinity. This is taken seriously by God. We may be a good preacher, teacher, a good Christian, a good believer, but I want to tell you even this is taken in account. This is where Psalms 40 plays a big role. This evening shall be close our eyes. Let this be our prayer. Let this be our prayer this evening. Lord, let nothing separate me from the love and faith in Jesus. Lord, I don't want to be so rich that I may forget you. I don't want to be so poor that I may blame you. 
Father, in any situation, give me godly contentment, O oh Father. Give me faith in you, which will take me to the other side victoriously. Though I may undergo, un undergo challenges in my life, my faith in Jesus is more precious than all the trials. Father, help me to understand that. I am confident that my faith is built on nothing less than Jesus and his righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. and amen. Over to Kumar. Go ahead. Amen and amen. This 